Hi everybody, my name is Todd Krieger. What I do is I help couples heal from infidelity and other such crises. I also help couples rekindle passion and also I help individuals heal uh, their trauma through a method called EMDR, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. Today, we're going to be talking about when you're dealing with an addicted partner. This is something that comes up in my practice all the time. We know addiction is a very prevalent problem. So many of the couples that come, there's uh, one partner, sometimes both, that is dealing with an alcohol issue or a drug issue or both. And so I thought it was very important, since I get to so much in my practice, to talk about that. Now, first, what is addiction? Addiction, because, you know, people can drink alcohol and not be addicted, and people do drugs and not being addicted. But addiction is really all about the relationship that person has with that substance. So if a person's relationship with that substance is dependency, in other words, that they use that drug or alcohol to regulate their emotions, either down or up, down being makes them help uh, become less stressed, and up it makes them feel less inhibited and more alive, and they utilize that substance to, for that end, and do that consistently, then that is an addiction. That, that is an addiction. A person who, is, uh, who has, drinks alcohol on weekends, on a Friday night with their friends, uh, and they also social sometimes without it, that, that's not an addiction. The thing, the thing about addiction is, I mean, what are the signs, first of all? Let me just briefly talk about the signs, even though I'm gonna talk much more about it in, in, in the link below that I'll ask you to click. But, Basically, the science is going to be a change in mood or, you you know, every time you ask that person to reduce the intake of that substance that they call you controlling, you know, those kinds of things. If if you find that you're asking reasonable requests and it's being met with uh, some kind of uh, angry response or rebellious response, then you may have a partner who has addiction. Obviously, the problem with addiction is that the addiction becomes the centerpiece of the person's life. And that means that you're not the centerpiece of that person's life. Uh, that's the key thing. People that are, have addictions are manipulative. They, they do what they do so that they can continue to regulate their emotions through the substances they take, alcohol or drug. So um, what I would suggest, firstly, is ask the person, if you think that your partner is addicted, and you see some of these signs, is you want to ask that person if they think they have a problem. That's an important question, because if that person says, I have a problem, that's called, they're in the contemplative stage. At least they realize they have a problem. Versus the pre-contemplative stage. Pre-contemplative stage is when a person doesn't even think they have a problem. They're in total denial. So that, that, that's a big, that's, uh, that, there's different uh, interventions based on that stage. So the person thinks they have a problem, and then you would want to ask them, would you be willing to do something about it? Would you be willing to go to an AA, AA meeting or an NA, Narcotics Anonymous meeting, or some other thing? Are you willing to go to a therapist? Ideally, both is what I think is best, uh, which I'll get to in a, in a few minutes. But uh, I, you would ask those questions. Now, if your addicted partner says, I am willing to do that. So they're moving out of the contemplative stage into preparing to do it and even into action. That is great. That's a good sign. And then just give them a lot of appreciation, a lot of support, give them a lot of applause. If you need to go into therapy with them to help them and support them, I would definitely do that. If your partner refuses to do that, I could tell you then that's not good. And what it means is that you have no reason to think it's going to change. And if it's not going to change, then you're going to be in the same spot. If you do nothing different and you just adapt to it, it's going to be the same two years from now, five years from now, ten years from now. So if, th- if that's the response, I'm not doing anything, that's when you need to set a boundary, a hard boundary, a really hard boundary with that person. You need to basically say, well, I mean, basically have to give them a consequence. I will only stay with you past next week if you attend one AA meeting. 
I will uh, only stay with you past this week if you uh, go, you call up a therapist. There's got to be some action. I'm not, ex- I'm not saying that uh, the person stops drinking immediately or stops using drugs immediately, but they're taking some action to let you know they're working on it. And you have to stick to that boundary. It's really important. Otherwise, you're part of the problem. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. At least you increase the chances of that person taking care of the addiction that they have. So you want to keep those boundaries consistent too. Don't do it and then give in every once in a while. It's got to be very consistent. Remember, the addictive person is manipulative. And that manipulation could drag you down. The most important thing in realizing uh, what goes on with someone who's addicted is that in some ways they're emotionally young and immature. That's important to realize. Because what happens with an addicted person is they become self-absorbed. Like I said, it's the substance that becomes the centerpiece of their life, not you, not the children. And so it's really very, very important for you to keep those boundaries consistent. Um, At some point, you won't need to so much because that person is now bought in and is into growing and growing up. But like a lot of children that don't want to grow up, uh, a lot of adults that are in the womb of the addiction don't want to grow up and leave the womb and learn how to self-regulate in a world where they're not depending on a substance. So you have to be firm. And that is loving. That is very, very loving. So, I mean, I think that's basically my message to you, that if you're dealing with an addicted partner, you want to be loving, you want to be supportive, but you also have to be kind to yourself and you have to be willing to be uncomfortable, which sometimes is being having that hard boundary and willing to be firm so that that person moves out of their hard boundary. Sometimes you may need an exit plan. In other words, it might be that you're not ready to set a hard boundary because if you set that boundary, the relationship would break up and you're not in a financial place to do that. So that is when, when I'll work with a partner of an addicted person to help them formulate a plan. It might be a one-month plan. I had one um, client that did a 13-year plan. I wouldn't recommend that. But it took her 13 years to get sufficient financially and emotionally so that she could leave her husband who had a habit of smoking pot incessantly and really wasn't there for her intimately wise. Uh, But more likely, it's going to be less time than 13 years. But sometimes it might take a year or two years or six months. So whatever it takes, but at least you have a plan. This woman was okay throughout that process because she had a plan and she was moving. She was moving. And at any time, if he woke up and was willing to get on the bandwagon of sobriety, that would have been good, but it never happened in her case. So uh, what I recommend is you click on the link below that talks about uh, seven steps. Your partner is addicted to drugs or alcohol. And it's really important to see and, 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 and honor yourself. Like I said, the partner that you have that's addicted could be very manipulative. And so this, this checklist of the seven signs could be helpful to, to help you continue to trust your intuition that uh, something really is a problem no matter what the partner says. So click on that link. I wish you well. I wish, uh, if, if you have a partner who is uh, addicted, I, I wish that partner well as well. And I, I just think there's always hope. But you can't keep doing the same old things either. You have to do things differently to make things differently. This is Todd Krieger, making the world safe for love.